On March 5, 1770, British soldiers opened fire on a group of unarmed American protesters, killing five, either three or four, immediately, with one dying later, in an event referred to as the Boston Massacre, sometimes called the first shots fired in the American Revolutionary War. The first American gunned down was Crispus Attox, a freeman of African and Native American descent. <laughs> Described in contemporary documents as a mulatto, Attox was of mixed race, definitely of African and Wampanoag descent, possibly with white mixed in. It is not known if he was a runaway slave or if he had been freed. By 1770, tensions in America between colonials and the British overlords had become strained, and when a group of Americans started heckling and harassing a British soldier, several other British soldiers came to the sentry's assistance. The mob of irate Americans continued their tirade against the lobsterbacks, so called because of their bright red uniforms, even to the point of poking them in the chest. After repeated orders to disperse and threats to open fire, the British suddenly fired on the crowd, killing the five martyrs. Irate Americans demanded the soldiers involved be tried for murder, and eight of the redcoats that had fired were tried, with future President John Adams acting as their attorney. Adams argued that the mob, which he called, A motley rabble of saucy boys, Negroes and mulattoes, Irish teagues, and outlandish jack tars, that is, sailors, presented a threat to the soldiers and that the shooting was in self-defense. The trial resulted in six acquittals and two convictions on the lesser charge of manslaughter. The two convicted soldiers branded on the hand as punishment. The argument for avoiding the death penalty was the English claim of benefit of clergy, which originally pertained to the clergy to avoid extreme punishment, and in this case referred to the soldiers acting in context with their position of duty as mitigation for their actions. Attox had been born in Massachusetts around 1723, thus 47 at the time of his death, a slave of a local deacon. A 1750 advertisement by Deacon Brown for a runaway slave called Crispus may refer to Attox. It is believed Attox had become a sailor or a whaling man after running away, although his status as either a runaway or a free man is debated by historians. He may have used an alias, Michael Johnson, to avoid arrest. Contemporary accounts do not refer to him as a Negro, but as either mixed race or as an Indian. The term mulatto, as used in 1770, may have referred to a full-blooded Native American or a person of any mixture of races, not necessarily an African American mixed race person. It could even refer to a lighter-skinned African. In any case, it is probable that Attucks was in some form of African descent, and both African Americans and Native Americans proudly point to his sacrifice as an early martyr to the American Revolution and independence. History has likewise honored the sacrifice of Crispus Attucks and the other four martyrs of the Boston Massacre, and his name was invoked by abolitionists. Even Stevie Wonder referred to Attox in his song, Black Man, referring to Attox as, First man to die for the flag we now hold high was a black man. The Boston Massacre was commemorated by Paul Revere in a famous engraving copied from an engraving by Harry Pelham, and the event is considered to be the tipping point in revolutionary fervor leading to American independence. The five men killed that day are often referred to as the first casualties of the American Revolution. The name Crispus Attucks deserves a place on the honor roll of African American heroes. As a question for my students and subscribers, what other African American heroes do you look up to? Please let us know in the comments section below this video. 
If you like this video and would like to receive notification of new videos, please feel welcome to subscribe to History and Headlines and become one of our patrons. Your viewership is much appreciated.